For the first time, New Zealand has a sophisticated patient safety initiative that will reduce harm caused by surgical site infections. The Surgical Site Infection Improvement Program provides district health boards with best practice quality improvement interventions to help them reduce surgical site infection risk. The third to be implemented is the clipping not shaving intervention. Standardising the way health professionals prepare the incision site prior to hip and knee arthroplasty surgery ensures that all patients receive best practice care, reducing surgical site infection risk. Infection strategy, which uh, is relevant to discuss, is the question of shaving versus clipping. Now, clipping is certainly the preferred option because if a patient shaves, the night before, they're likely to cause minor degrees of bleeding. In that blood, bacteria which live on the skin are likely to multiply and set up minor sites of infection on the skin. It's been shown that shaving the skin before operations causes trauma. You may not see it, but it damages the skin. When you've got damaged skins, organisms colonise that skin. So there's a lot of information showing that if you have to get rid of hair, then it should be clipped from the skin, not shaven, and immediately just before the operation. Years and years ago, people would shave the skin the day before the operation, and then it would be heavily colonised so that when surgery happened, there was a high rate of infection. Nowadays, hair is usually left, but if you have to get rid of it, just clip it, don't shave, and you'll have the lowest possible infection rate. To improve the safety and quality of care that patients receive, the Surgical Site Infection Improvement Program recommends that DHBs implement the following. Hair should not be removed from the surgical site unless it interferes with the surgical procedure. If hair removal is necessary, clippers should be used instead of razors to prepare the surgical site. Either a single-use electric or battery-powered clipper should be used, or a clipper with a reusable head that can be disinfected between patients. Clipping should occur as close to the time of surgery as possible. Hair removal should take place outside of the operating room. Patients should be educated not to shave in the vicinity of the surgical site before admission. And finally, all razors should be removed from surgical wards and operating rooms to prevent their use in the future. More detailed information can be found in the Surgical Site Infection Improvement Program Implementation Guidelines on the Health Quality and Safety Commission website. The hope for this program is to make sure that the standard of care infiltrates into surgical practice in the country and if we can get everyone maximising and complying with the best practice, then we should be able to drive surgical site infection to the lowest possible rate.